Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Um, it's not really a question, it's a remark, because you ask why do they um, take Microsoft, which costs 100 times more. In my experience, it's all about, organization is always about delegating responsibilities. And uh, for, I, for myself, call it the IBM rule. Yeah, if you uh, apply for an IT project, uh, they will finally choose IBM, because if the project fails, and it will, the responsible person will always tell his boss, what could I do? I hired IBM. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, that's why and the, the, the thing you might be able to yes. do against it is to, to, to be grassroots, to get a bottom-up decision. That's the, the thing, but it's always on uh, delegating responsibilities and that's uh, <coughs> against the culture of failure. Exactly. It's, yeah. So uh, this is what I'm uh, inviting you all to think about, that uh, we need to have a culture of celebrating failure in Europe. Yeah. Otherwise, it won't change. If, uh, because, and, and why we need it so desperately? It's not only because it's, oh, it would be fun. It's because if you have to make a choice as a specialist in an office, and your choice is either to be secure or to try something new, to, a new way to do something, to, to make our work better or our, our like small office work better, if if I'm going to choose for having a stable job, then we have all lost something. And at the moment, it's happening at a very massive scale all over Europe. We have a lot of money here in Europe, but we are not using it wisely at all. That's why Asia and US are going away from us very, very rapidly. And at the same time, the politicians very often uh, want, to tr want to do things on their own. I mean, polit politicians, instead of letting this game people who have made the chemistry game to do this and to, to just buy it from the, from the makers, they will say, and I've heard this so many times myself, why should we buy your product? I'm s I'm, of course, I have got a good explanation now. I'm, I'm saying, okay, if, if, for example, if you want to do uh, this so uh, software, what we have built for the past eight years, if you want to do this for Germany, it will cost you about 10 million euros. From us, you will get it um, maybe for 500K uh, a year. And, and uh, we will provide a full service and you will get it next year, not after two years. And, uh, and you will get a professional team to support it as well. So why should you do it yourself? If it's, you get it already 10 times cheaper and you get it in, in already proven quality. But still, the politicians are saying that they want to do it themselves. Maybe it helps if you deliver them the, the um, KPI, working KPI, because they always <laughs> want to measure success. And if you give them uh, the, the, the scale to measure their success, if you create the scale, it can be in your favor. And you have the first to... to uh, it's not my job to do Yes, this. of course. It's, but, uh, you, you, it's you were looking... It's in all of our interest. This is what I'm, my point is. It's in all of our interest to have a better education. Yes? Yeah. Because if we have better education for everybody, globally, then we will have a better society. True. Do you agree with me? If, this, if the kids are better prepared, if we are all not frustrated because we are wasting our time in schools, and it's going to, it's the most boring, we, are, we have, the livelihood of our kid childhood, and we are wasting it sitting in the chairs, we can't use our energy that we have, we can't play with our friends. This is not the way that th things should be done nowadays. I hope you agree. Can I, can I bring in a few people that have a more technical background here? Right. Because, right. I mean, we're a con this is a country of perfectionists, right? And this is what we're talking about, which is why I would like to question the idea of celebrating failure, it, it'll never sell to top management. But what will sell is giving people credit, open a playing field or so. Uh, in Germany, you know, if you want to have a product cleared by central management, you'd have to anticipate 
100 years of supply chain, etc. Make sure it gets to the last customer and then it's considered a mature product. I'm overdoing this, of course. But a lot of technical people in the room, or half technical people, they know what I'm talking about. So I would like to bring in people like Jan, who is just uh, pointing his finger. Uh, is there something we can do about uh, granting our techies, you know, freedom to develop stuff even if it fails or so? I wouldn't put so much the emphasis on celebrating failure, but talking in KPI terms, what is the human capital factor, you know, that we're generating in this process? Whatever the perspective is. Do you want to come in, Jan? That was not necessarily the point I wanted to make, but I can try to, to adjust it. I think what, what you mentioned and what you showed with the example of the video game is how do I put my customer, in that case the student, first, how can I make it the most easiest for him, not necessarily for me. I mean, creating a game is a lot of work and all of that, so I think what it boils down to, uh, from my perspective, is if it's a production company, if it's uh, the government or whatever, the m fundamental mindset shift is, I, I wouldn't necessarily say fear, but is not what is the easiest for me, but what is the easiest for the customer. And I think there are many, many examples uh, out there of companies who think about that first and then get into making heavy money, if you think about uh, Facebook and all of these examples. At the beginning, they thought, what, how can we make the best product for the, company, uh, for the customer that we anticipate? And I think that change, not what's the easiest for me, but what's the easiest or best for my customer is what, what needs to change. And without that, it's not digitalization. It's just something digital. <laughs> so more market orientation. Uh, any more questions, uh, please, Samson? The, the point was that there is no market, remember? So in the US, we fail rapidly all the time. I just told my friend we elected a president so we could prove a point and get over that failure. Um, but when you think about failure, as an American, if you've never failed in a business, we don't want to do business with you because success only sets you up for failure. You don't have the mental resiliency to rebound. But if you've had a couple of bankruptcies, you've lived on the street, you've been homeless, you lived out of your car, great. You failed, and now you're going to take those lessons and apply them. And when you think about the data and the metrics, think about it as rapid prototyping for a business. Because if you go out, you hit it hard, and you fail in three months, it's way better than failing in three years. And, the, and, um, and so it's, it is a cultural mind, sh mind shift, but it's something that you should do. Because I, I talked to some people at some very high level companies, and they were saying, I want a company that has these, all these key indicators that's five years old and has something that's off the shelf ready to go. And I said they would never work with you because they did a token sale or an initial coin offering and they've raised a couple hundred million dollars. And they don't need you as a partner because I've helped them go get your customers. And now that you're a giant organization and you're shrinking because you're losing customers, the companies that you ignored, that you could have bought out, but you wanted to see those KPIs, now they don't need you. They don't want to partner with you because we've gone to get your customers. And so when you're thinking about, I'm a large, big behemoth, you're not agile, nimble enough and you haven't gone out and got some people who will, go, who will go out and advocate passionately for this little David because the only thing that's on our plate are Goliaths. We don't eat small fish. We only go after the Goliaths. And that's just entrepreneurship. <laughs> don't eat small fish. <laughs> More questions up, up there? Yeah, we like to eat Goliath. I mean, that's why, I mean, education sector or expenditure globally is seven trillion dollars. Seven trillion. Does it bring, like, make any kind of movement? Uh, okay, I'll bring an example. So uh, the, the total uh, uh, market for media is one and a half trillion globally. Media, and, and today in the media business, we see the biggest companies in the world. Google, Facebook, and so on. They're all media companies. And, and uh, what's the difference between education 
and media is that the media business is about 30% digitized. And now we have the biggest companies in the world there in this sector. Education business or education, well, let's not, not call it business. Um, education sector, seven trillion uh, dollar marketplace or, or expenditure at least. And uh, it's only about 1% digitized. So if we will have somebody who will figure out how to actually overrule all these rules and regulations and run into schools with the best products as we just saw on the screen and, and enable students to learn two, three times faster than they would learn in a normal school environment, this company might be the next biggest company in the world in an education. Let's make, let's make you move. So kids here, if you are thinking of doing a business now, there is a lot of space actually out there. there is, we need entrepreneurial people to, to start up companies and, and to innovate some niches of the world. For example, there is another Estonian startup that is doing, um, uh, they, they call themselves Planet OS. Cool name, isn't it? So, and what they did is that they uh, plugged their, their uh, business into all over the world. Uh, there is a lot of universities that collect data about an, our environment. So there is a lot of projects like that. And they plugged into this data. So now they collect a massive amount of data of how our world ecosystem works. And they make in, it into clear, uh, like clean money. So they, uh, for example, their biggest product at the moment is uh, helping wind, wind uh, generators to become more efficient. So they sell to the biggest wind, uh, wind generation companies. And they, uh, in the beginning, when I talked to them, they said, okay, we make uh, the wind generations about the, uh, the windmills about 15% better, more efficient, 15%. Then I talked to, to them again about the year after, and they said, oh, we're doing about 30% increase in uh, efficiency in windmills. And I talked to them this year as well. And they said, you know, now we are doing 50% increase of efficiency. These big windmills that we see outside, they could be producing 50% more energy if you use the best software. It's th the only difference is the software that you use. So it would be optimizing the work that the windmill is doing. So that's the difference. That's why we need digitization, to squeeze maximum out of the infrastructure that we have. I hope it makes a lot of sense to you. Thanks. Well, but 15% increase in performance is a pretty straightforward KPI, I would say. And then I guess I'm totally in for investing in this kind of data analysis. Um, and I guess when it comes to education, the gamble is quite high to fail. And even if you fail fast, you may, uh, you may uh, damage the education of one semester, two semesters, depends on how fast you fail. So I guess having KPIs and measuring like how digital uh, aid in, in education performs is, is super important, I would what's say. What's the KPI? I mean, do you, if you see kids happy learning the most boring subject in the world, isn't it a good KPI? Uh, yes, I if, if, if they are able to comprehend the concepts and work with them because I, I feel uh, that we have in the digital age everything gets easier we are totally addicted why, to why our do you dispute the idea that uh, they might not be able to learn I, 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 I don't I, uh, I just okay, say I'll, it I'll must, I'll it, it, it must be it measurable to, to be uh, able to decide that it's, it's worth to integrate I'll make it very simple uh, there was a test done in a school in Finland so uh, the guys went into the school, it was the Rovio guys, and uh, they gave everybody a phone to try out the key, uh, another uh, cool ca game for chemistry learning, actually. Chemistry learning is very popular among startups, uh, education innovators, because it's the hardest subject to learn. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what they did was they ga gave everybody a phone, and they just said, okay guys, play now, dig in. So kids were playing for 15 minutes, it was primary school students. And after they finished playing, uh, the, the guys were asking, okay guys, okay students, um, <coughs> did, uh, how did you like it? And everybody was like, 
wow, it's so cool to play because it was very nicely designed, as we just saw, and, and uh, it's very interactive. So, uh, and then they asked, okay, but did you learn something? And the kids were like, no, it's just a game. Like, we didn't learn anything. So, um, and then they asked, okay, but do you know what is helium? Of course we know. And then they, the students started explaining. I mean, we talk about primary uh, school students. So what they did was that actually within this 15 minutes, they learned about two lessons of material. Does it make sense? Yeah. What kind of KPI is more do you want? Yeah, but it's important to, to, to point that out, I guess. You, you, you said like KPIs are not that. KPIs well, are very important. Yeah. And, and of course, education uh, innovators are looking at it very much. It's, uh, education is a science of its own. Cool. Um, we have to wrap up, I think. Last question on Etta. Last one. Could you please stay on for a sec before we have our break? Well, to me, your examples are very good illustrators that digital transformation without brilliant communication will fail. Because to me, you're a good example of someone that is scaring people away from digitalization because you assume that all this techie world will be so brilliant and you're all so deficit-oriented out there that you will need us to solve your problems. And you're not a partner of these people, but you are the world changers and you want us, let's talk about me in the role of, let's say, a parent with school children or someone working in schools with schools, you scare the hell out of me in being light years away from everyday life. You're light years away from all concepts of pedagogy that are well established and well defined. We had a similar thing in, in public engagement strategies. We started with a deficit-oriented approach, saying let's give the people out there all the evidence that we can have, all the data, all the information, and every, everything will be fine. It failed completely. Statistics show that even the more information you give people, the more skeptical they will be. The second step was a dialogue, so they could ask you some questions, but in the end you wanted to convince them. Today, we are all working as partners. So today, the model is participation. So if you want to sell something to schools or to administration or to all these old-fashioned, slow people out there, become their partners. Try to understand them. Try to understand what they may bring up to your innovation. If you are the only one with the knowledge and they're the stupid ones, why the hell should they sell or should they buy anything from you? So of course you're brilliant, but they have some good expertise too. And if you join forces, this could lead to something really good. But if you, if you just sell your brilliance to them, they will be skeptical, they won't trust you, and a digital world without trust is not working. Thank you. Can I, can I suggest we integrate that question, what is the role of the change drivers? How should they team up, you know, with a target group, so-called target groups? Can we underpin our open space event with this sort of thing? That would be very, very interesting. It would help us very, very much, you know, to steal the work of our consortium. I think this is one of the big transversal issues we would need to discuss here. Uh, Mart, can I leave it there? Is that okay? Good. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your contributions. For speakers, thank you very much, Mart. Thank you. <laughs>